What's up, party animals? My name is Kezi, and today I wanted to talk to you about the world of analog versus the world of digital. And by analog, I mean anything that's not digital, from electromechanical, things like the Mellotron, to things that are acoustic, like brass instruments or guitars. And to start this off, I want to talk to you about The Joy of Painting by Bob Ross. I tried to follow along, because that's, that's kind of how he does the episodes. It's like, follow me in this joy of painting, do what I do, and you can learn too. And I tried that, and I failed miserably. And I don't think it was just because I was, you know, a poor artist. I think part of it was the tools I was using wasn't the same as Bob Ross. I was on a computer. Bob Ross was using real paint and real paintbrushes. And with the twist of his wrist and the right brush, he could paint a whole tree. I had a circle brush and that was about it for the time. I couldn't paint anything more complicated than what I could imagine in my head. And visualizing an entire tree can be quite complicated. And so that bothered me. Bob Ross was using analog and that allows things to be imprecise because digital is a precision device, whereas analog kinda isn't. It can be affected by things like the ambient air or temperature or a million other things that you might not even think of, but is always playing an effect in things that come out of these devices. In a digital world, all that has to be programmed in on purpose. Whereas in analog, you can do pretty simple designs and all this nuance can come into play. When you pluck a Titan string, like as in a guitar, you can pluck it with like a robot, but every time might be a little different based on the outside forces affecting it. There aren't happy little accidents in a digital space because a one will always be a one and a zero is always a zero, always. You wouldn't want a calculator to accidentally get the wrong number because it's too hot outside. But you might want, you know, a little bit of paint to run for aesthetic. If you're like doing street art, for example, and that can look good. But if you had to actively add that, well, that can, that can be a problem. I want to come up with a, 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 an approach to making art in a, an increasingly digital world where this idea of analog and the nuance that comes with it can be part of the process. And it's difficult to, to, to inspire when you're only using things that you do intentionally. Happy little accidents are pretty important. And so if you aren't thinking in that way, you're not able to, you're almost not able to get inspired because the instrument isn't guiding you along. And so I think that, that we all need to take one, go for, go for analog things if you can. And two, if you can't, maybe try to think about it a little bit. And if you have any ideas how to do that, leave a comment below, because I'm super curious. This seems... This is hard to do, because it's hard to grab an analog system. They're very expensive, because they're single-purpose devices. So, yeah, I guess grab something that inspires you, and if something does, let me know. But I guess that's going to be it. Um, so I appreciate you and thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.